Hello, welcome to my channel. Another bibliophile reads. I am here to do the song tag. This was created by Gareth at Books, Songs, and Other Magic. I was tagged by Bad as Rad 2. There are eight prompts to this tag. Now, as a preference, I'm going to say that I don't listen to a lot of music anymore. When I was in my 20s, I used to be a lot more into music than I am now. Mostly because I was single and I could go home and I could just listen to whatever music that I wanted to listen to. When I wanted to go out to music, I had pretty easy access to music venues. But once I got married, playing music in the house with your spouse doesn't always work. And as we moved further and further out into the, the distant suburbs, um, music venues became less accessible. I was less willing to drive an hour, hour and a half to go see some music. So it sort of dropped off. I also discovered audiobooks. And um, when I had a little time to listen, I'd more often turn on an audiobook than put in a CD of music. But anyway, let me get on with the prompts. Prompt number one. Name a song that always makes you happy. Now, let me again answer this, that this is all about songs and not all music are songs. If you open your iTunes, every track is listed as a song, even if it is not a song. So I'm going to interpret these um, questions of songs as a track that you'd find on your iTunes. So anyway, name a song that always makes you happy. Mozart almost always makes me happy. There are some exceptions to that, um, but he's a very cheerful composer for the most part. I can throw out things like the piano concerto number six. Vivaldi is often a very cheerful and happy composer. I'm going to throw out um, the Four Seasons Spring as a, a piece of very happy music. But really, there is only one answer to this question, and that is Beethoven's Ode to Joy, which ends his um, Ninth Symphony. It is the most happy music ever written. And I'm going to link some videos to all these pieces of music. Um, the one for the Ode to Joy is not technically the best played or the best version, but it is very illustrative of the joy of Beethoven's music. It is a flash mob scene. A flash mob is when just music musicians gather in public and just start playing the music. And so it very well shows how joyful Beethoven's Ode to Joy is. Prompt number two. Name a song that's a great fit for when you are in a pensive mood. I discovered this piece of music when I was visiting a labyrinth. Um, I believe it was uh, set up in a church, uh, non-denominational, but a labyrinth is a walking path where you walk around and around towards the center, and you're supposed to walk very slow and think very heavily and meditate. And they were playing this piece of music in the background. It is um, Gavin Breyer's um, Jesus Blood Will Never, Jesus Blood Never Fail Me Yet. And um, it's a piece of classical music. And the composer discovered this, uh, or created this, um, after discovering a piece of recorded music of a tramp singing. And it's little religious ditty that this tramp is singing that is um, about Jesus Blood Never Failing Him. And what he did is he took that piece of music and put it on a continuous loop. So when you first start hearing this piece of music, it, it's almost inaudible. You can hear the tramp just barely singing. And then the composer brings up the volume in the next loop. And again, in the next loop. And you he can hear just the tramp singing. And then he brings in a violin. And then after the next loop, he brings in a second violin. And it progresses in that, in that matter. And you have a couple of different movements with a different 
couple of different types of instruments. The first one is all strings, and then he adds other instruments. And at the very end, he brings in the singer Tom Waits to, to, to sort of uh, sing a duet with this tramp on a loop. And Tom Waits has a very distinctive, powerful voice. And then he starts tapering back on the tramp, bringing down the volume. And at the very end, you just hear Tom Waits singing this, this, this religious ditty, and it sounds like he's moving away from you. And it is just incredibly powerful. And a lot of people are going to hate this music because it's just something you have to sit down to and listen deliberately. You just don't put it on the background. Or you can walk the maze like I did or the labyrinth. That also worked. But it brings your thoughts in. And um, the way to, to listen to it is um, sit down, put on your headphones, and just listen. And a lot of people, as I said, are probably really not going to like this piece of music because it's um, just very different. Prompt number three, name a song that changed your taste in music. When I was um, working in my 20s, um, I worked at Board of Books and Music, and um, one of the, the, the lovely young ladies that I worked with that I was uh, sort of interested in turned me on to this piece of music. It is uh, Arvo Parts Tedeum, and um, he is an Estonian composer, he is uh, known for his minimalist style, um, known as, um, I have it written down here, um, Tin Tin Abule, and that comes from Latin for bells. And it's a very quiet piece of music. And in this, he went to one of those Estonian monasteries, and you have the singers and some instrumentals, and they're singing these old Latin songs, and it's just achingly beautiful. I don't care that it's religious in the words. The music is just achingly beautiful. And from there, I got turned on to um, Spiegel im Spiegel, which is um, piano and cello, I believe. And then another piece of uh, very minimalist music, For Alina, which is just um, piano. And again, it's very quiet. It's it just couple of keys. It's like the, the piano player only has a couple of fingers or something when he's playing this, but it's just, again, achingly beautiful music. And um, that sort of brought me out of, um, of an area of listening to classical music where I only listen to, you know, the classical classical composers. It, it brought me into the idea that some modern music is actually pretty good. Prompt Number four, name a recent song that you have discovered and loved. I don't listen to a lot of new music anymore. Um, it just doesn't happen. But for whatever reason, YouTube um, offered me up a video of a video by this band named um, Von Walbergischnicht. It's German, Walbergischnicht, which is um, a celebration on April 30th mixing um, old Christian mythology and pagan myths. It is known as a witch's, witch's Sabbath. And the music is sung in German. Um, the background instruments include a hurdy-gurdy. You have to look that up. A hurdy-gurdy is a wound. He's winding it and playing it. It's just very odd, and it's sung in German. Um, it includes these paganistic dancing, where you have these very scantily um, dressed young women dancing around a bonfire. And um, then comes the Styers. These are people dressed up like Pan. And it's a wonderful little video, and the music is actually quite interesting. You know, I don't know what the exact words are because it's sung in German, but it's a fascinating video to watch, and the music is really kind of interesting. Um, it did get me to watch a couple of the, the, this band's music, music videos, some of them are pretty good, but I like the this one the best. Okay, prompt number five. Name three bands or artists that you love. I've never liked the term band because it's so limited. It just um, does not encompass of all the ways musicians can gather and play together. 
And I, I tend not to follow individual artists that closely. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to name three great pieces of music that I like that may not be entirely familiar to most people. And the first one is going to be Busoni's Piano Concerto in C Major. It is known as the Mahler um, music, uh, Piano Concerto. It is a huge piano concerto. It's very rarely played because it just requires a massive number of musicians on the stage, including the piano and the chorus. But again, you listen to this and it is just such an achingly beautiful piece of music in my mind. I was playing it on a CD when I was traveling um, in upstate New York. Um, my wife and mother-in-law were in the car and they said, put on a beautiful piece of music. And I put this on and they just did not like it at all. Um, it is an acquired taste, but um, it's absolutely beautiful in my mind. Another great piece of music that I like is Mahler's Second Symphony, the Resurrection Symphony. For whatever reason, I dig Mahler. Um, he has this big sound and uh, again, another big orchestration. And um, out of all his symphonies, I, I think I do like the second the best, um, then probably his first. But the second is something people should check out. But again, that's a big piece of music that is um, over an hour long. So it's going to test the patience of many listeners. And lastly, I'm going to pick a piece of music that most people will know, and that is Pictures at an Exhibition by Mozarski. But I'm picking the original piano version. Most people are familiar with the orchestration by Ravel, some other people have orchestrated, but many people do not realize that Mazorsky originally wrote this for solo piano. And I kind of prefer the solo piano version. It's really rather interesting. And um, again, I will, I will provide um, video links in my playlist so people can follow these if they so choose. Prompt number six, what instrument would you like to be able to play? the piano. I would love to be able to sit down and play box Goldberg variations, just uh, if I'm ever in the mood, but I have no musical talent. I was never trained to read music. I was never trained to play music. When I was growing up, I had an older brother and an older sister. Both of them had piano lessons and um, both of them failed miserably at learning piano. So when it came time for me, my parents just said, nah, why bother? So I never learned piano. But it would have been nice to have learned. Prompt number seven. Name a fiction book with music at the center of the narrative. I am going to pick Vernon Subertex by Virgine Dupont. This is actually a trilogy. There's book one, two, and three. Um, it is the story of a man in Paris, Vernon Supertex, who owned a music store for CDs, and he was really good at picking music for people. If you walked into his store, he could find you just the right CD that you wanted to listen to. But he went out of business. He ran out of money, and he became a homeless man wandering the streets of Paris. And... Um, sort of a cult-like figure, but you'll have to read the books to discover that. But interspersed in this is Vernon Subertek's love of music, and the author inserts lots of references to different songs, and you can tell that the author really loved these songs as well. Um, the one reference that I remember was talking about The Clash and how special they were as a band. So I'm going to include... Um, the Clash playing London Calling for this. Now, also for a book, I am going to include E. Katrina by Donald Harrington. Donald Harrington was an art professor at um, a university in Arkansas. He loved the state of Arkansas. He, he, he did, wasn't born there, but he moved there. And this book was originally in 1991. 
Um, it talks about an Arkansas that's no longer around. This was the Arkansas that elected Bill Clinton as governor. So we know that Arkansas is never around. He also talks a lot about the history of Arkansas. But in E. Katrina, he has a passage describing Tchaikovsky's Piano Concerto Number no. 1 and just how exquisitely beautiful that piece of music is. And it went on for a whole page or so. But then when you read about the author, Donald Harrington was almost completely deaf. He had 10% hearing in one ear, yet he could describe this music and you could just hear the beauty of the music in his words. So that is some piece of music that I just want to throw out there as well. So prompt number eight, tag some people. Well, I like mostly classical music, as you can see. So I'm going to tag another booktuber who I also think likes some classical music, and that is Elizabeth at Bookins and Books. Don't feel obliged to do this if you don't want to. And that is the end. Thank you for watching and keep on reading.